repairing a Stuart Twin Victoria model steam engine. This is part three, looking at the problems with this engine. So far, I've figured out there are quite a few problems with this engine lurking in the background, and the first one becomes apparent as soon as I remove the bolts that hold the cylinder down. If you look carefully, you will see that both of these slots in this bracket have been elongated using a needle file. This is to allow the cylinder to be moved around, forward and backwards. And this is no big deal really, using a needle file just to move the position of a hole that you've drilled in the wrong place is fairly common. I've done it myself on many, many occasions. And there's nothing really wrong with it. It will allow for some adjustment as well. It's better though to put it in a milling machine and actually mill a slot rather than use a thing like this. With any engine that gets hot, it's better to make sure you have a little bit of float so you can adjust things, because if everything was perfect, then you're going to get things seizing up. And the good news is, none of the bolts are sheared. They're all making very good contact with the threaded holes in the cast iron base. It's time now to remove the cylinder cover. I'll just give it a wipe with the cloth to get rid of all the oil residue. And as you can see, the bottom two bolts are countersunk bolts. That's to allow for the bracket. And thankfully, both of these countersunk bolts came out very easily. This is not sometimes the case. Sometimes I have actually had to drill them out on engines like this one. Right, the next thing to do is to remove the cylinder cover. The engineering standard of this engine is very good, so the cylinder cover is quite a tight fit into the cylinder. But it's no match for my old craft knife that lives on the bench. A quick tap with my hammer, and I mean a very, very gentle tap, and the cylinder cover is loose, and very easy to withdraw. And once I removed the cylinder cover, it was very easy to remove the piston, although not quite as easy as the cylinder cover. The piston's actually well machined and quite a tight fit. Normally with the Stuart Models Victoria, or a twin Victoria, the piston is fitted with a cast iron piston ring. But as can be seen in the current clip, this engine is not fitted with a cast iron piston ring. It's fitted with a strange looking black ring. Now this could be a Viton ring, which would be okay, although personally I find Viton to be quite abrasive, or it could just be an ordinary commoner garden neoprene ring, which is fine for compressed air, but not too good for steam. I had an engine a while back fitted with neoprene rings, and it was great on compressed air, then I ran it on steam, and after a while the engine just stopped running, and it was accompanied by quite a lot of black sludge pouring from the exhaust port. This was a small oscillator, so it was a very simple job to get into the cylinder, so I don't really want to put this back into the engine because as you've just been watching it takes considerably more time to get at the piston in an engine of this type to change the ring. So I think I'll change it before we start. The piston is to a good size. One and a half thou under full size which is one inch. But I don't know what the cylinder is, I didn't machine it. But it's a good fit in the cylinder even without the piston ring. So tomorrow I'll go up to Blackgate's Engineering and see if I can get either a piston ring or a steam grade silicone ring to suit the piston. Taking a look at this cylinder cover, there's plenty of meat on the recess part that goes into the cylinder, so I'm going to machine some of this away. And what you've just seen is the way that I centre it in the chuck. I put the part in the chuck and tighten the jaws slightly and then press the piece into position with the tailstock chuck and this makes sure that it runs true enough to be machined. And as you can see, it's running quite true enough for this job. Once I got the cover true in the chuck, I did of course tighten the jaws a little bit more. I really would not like this to jump out of the chuck and fall into several pieces. So I take quite light cuts, I didn't go mad, and very soon I've taken half of the amount off the actual cover. So now we probably have about a sixteenth of an inch more travel on the piston, which is really all we need, because that was about how much it was unscrewed on the piston rod. I don't really need to do this, but it's something that I generally do. Once I remove the part from the chuck, I clean it up using a bit of oil on some 180 grade wet or dry sandpaper. This just removes any burrs from the edges and cleans it up. It's surprising if you do this for quite a long time on this piece of sandpaper, the part gets very shiny, and if you work down the grades of sandpaper, it gets even shinier. 
Having a look in detail at the piston rod tells me that the piston rod is okay. When I feed it into the cover through the gland, everything feels good. Especially when I apply a drop of oil, it's very smooth. It's not unduly scratched and this is fully serviceable. Finally in this episode, I did an A-B comparison between a neoprene ring that I got out of my stock and the neoprene ring that was in the engine, and I found them to be the same. So it's up to Blackgates tomorrow to buy some silicone O-rings. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.